40 of my European backpacking trip. And today I'm going to Versailles. Just got off the train, doing a tour of it. And I can see it, it's right there. Woo. I'm so excited, I've always wanted to go to Versailles. Unfortunately, the weather is not the best. It's supposed to rain, hopefully the rain will hold off. <laughs> While rocking around, gotta have my umbrella. I wanted to be nice and beautiful and sunny, but hopefully that won't take away from the beauty of Versailles. Okay, so apparently Versailles was actually originally a hunting lodge. It was not built by King Louis XIV, but his father, King Louis XIII. And King Louis XIV was the first baby boy to be born in his family when his mom was 37, so quite very old. They weren't sure if they were gonna have a son to rule, but he did, and he became King of France at five, five years old and reigned for 72 years, the longest reigning monarch in all of European history, so quite crazy. Obviously, he was the one who built Versailles, which is where we're heading to now. Gardens of Versailles and the fountains are on. They're only on on the weekends during the summer and only for like an hour, so literally perfect timing. So, Louis XIV originally wanted to keep his father's old hunting mansion and have the best gardens in France to go with that, to compete with all the other noble men who had great gardens already. So, that's what it started with. Versailles began with the gardens. And then when they started it and realised how amazing they were, he was like, actually, let's balance that out with a big, great palace as well. <laughs> so this is, you know, thanks to the gardens of their fact. Also 4,000 people who lived in Versailles. Yes, wow. the entire top, you know, first and second estate were now invited to live in this beautiful palace. Oh, wow. It took 20 years for it to be ready, however. They would come in the summers, enjoy the gardens, and 20 years later is when it became the permanent residence. It was terrible to live in. Like, it was hot in the summer, cold in the winter. There's no sewage. They didn't have flushing toilets back then, you know? For 4,000 people, it's smelly, but it was still a privilege to come here and live here, right? So, oh, it's getting down there. Yeah. So, what was this all about? All these people living in Versailles, well, it's about everything revolving around the Sun King, right? If they're all living in his house, he can keep an eye on them, control <laughs> them, and start to manipulate them a little bit. Okay, so Louis XIV did this by watching their every move, knowing what they were going to do before they knew what they were going to do, and just controlling everything. And the fountains are on now. So the fountains at Versailles actually aren't on all the time because when they were built there's no lake or river around so there wasn't enough water to power them. So when Louis was dignitaries he would have people hiding in bushes called the royal fountaineers. He would blow a whistle, they would know to turn the fountain on and then turn it off. Oh my god, so cool! So cool with the, the, the music and look how high up that fountain goes. <laughs> Those shells are all from Madagascar because at that time Madagascar was under the French Empire. Everything in the gardens was from the French Empire. French goods built by French people. Louis XIV wanted to really invest in the French when he design this whole place. Most of Versailles is exactly how it used to look, but the kings themselves would 
you know, get rid of the grove and replant it, rebuild it. This is cool. This is actually a modern one that was only built a few years ago because Louis the 16th went toward what was originally here down because he wanted to build something new and he was the king during the French Revolution so didn't have a chance to do what he wanted. So it just sat here empty for hundreds of years. This is rocks that have been brought here and stuck together and made to look like a natural cave. All right, yeah. Now the statues you can see in the center we have Apollo again. So once he'd killed the dragon and he grew up, he was then cleansed by some nymph, which you can see right there. And he seems to be enjoying himself, does Apollo. <laughs> uh, he's going from a young boy to a grown man with the help of some women. And we're going to do the connection with Louis XIV and talk about his life with the ladies. We'll do that in a bit, though. We'll head out of this grove and go to the next fountain, and then we'll talk about his love life. Get ready for some scandal. Beautiful garden. Much better view. There's nobody over the other side, so perfect. All right, guys, so here we are in the Enceladus Grove. Uh, there, is in, oh, there is Enceladus in the center right there. First time I came here, I thought he was coming out of the ground, right? It's like, guys, oh, struggling to get out. No, it's the other way around. He is being buried. Enceladus uh, was one of the giants. All the different landscapes are so amazing. Like, you go from, like, big trees to gardens and bushes it's really 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 cool i'm at versailles house right behind me over there and then over here we have this beautiful garden it's so pretty <laughs> This is the Apollo um, bringing the sun out of the sea in the morning. Louis the 15th was so busy in the bedroom that um, Madame de Pompadour, as was her official mistress title, uh, she basically started ruling the country. The music makes it so much more epic. Well, had lots of lovers. You know, people think, oh, she was the queen who had all these men around her. There is no evidence to su suggest she had any male lovers. But people knew Louis the Sixteenth had the penis problem. So when she finally had children, they were like, well, he can't be the father, right? Because we know he's got that issue. The kids looked exactly like Louis the Sixteenth. Unfortunately for them, <laughs> he was definitely the father. All right. But so she may have had one lover. He's a Swedish man by the name of Count von Fersen. A count, he was a bit of a social climber, made friends with Marie Antoinette, and they wrote each other love letters a lot. We have no proof that they ever had sex. Possibly they did, but we really don't know, okay? But other than that, she had no other lovers. So why did people start to believe this? Well, that's where people were handing out tabloid press, as we would call it today. So these flyers are saying, you know, terrible things about the monarchy, because people like to read that. And then they start to realize that the, um, the most sexual pamphlets are the ones that are selling more. This spreads around France and people just start to believe that she's having like mass parties in the Trianon. And it really did make people very angry, you know? They thought, well, she's just having all of this fun. She's not doing her job as a queen. Okay. And they did start to detest her. So 
I decided I'm gonna go inside because while it might look like other palaces I've been to, yeah, I feel like I can't come to Versailles and not go inside. I'm gonna get a little food first though because the line can be long, so eat the food and line. The front gates of Versailles. gonna be there in just a minute through those gates. I'm now in the courtyard, the front courtyard of Versailles. Look at all that gold, beautiful detail. It is gorgeous, gorgeous. I can't believe that I am at Versailles and the gates in the background right behind me. Beautiful gold. Gate. <laughs> Just got inside of Versailles. Here's the cathedral or chapel, I guess would be the better word for it. Chapel church. Very pretty. So this is the Apollo room, where there actually used to be a throne right here that the king would let people come and hold an audience with him. Uh, here's the Hall of Mirrors, the absolutely most famous room at Versailles. Wow, looks like it goes on for so long in the Hall of Mirrors. It is beautiful in here. Beautiful. And of course the camera's not focusing right on it, but trust me, it's very, very pretty. So this right here is King Louis XIV's bed chamber. It's at the very center of the palace faces the rising sun because the nickname for King Louis was the sun because that was when they discovered that the earth orbited around the sun the sun did not orbit around the earth so in other words everyone else orbited around him he was the most important person in the world <laughs> the room of the gallery of battles looks very similar to the big long room that's in the Louvre oh it's a little smaller but it's all to pick battles it's like super well groomed and beautiful another beautiful part of Versailles garden I could go down here but I'm too lazy and honestly it's probably a better view I'm up here seeing the whole thing right behind me. I just got done inside the palace. It took a little longer than I thought it was going to. It's like four o'clock. 
I'd like to be leaving for seven by six. Well, we'll see about that because I did purchase the other two palaces. Thinking I'd be done a little earlier. Might not have. Hadn't, but poor guy said it took about an hour and a half, so we'll see. So I'm gonna book my butt over there. The fountains are back on again. Actually, three palaces on the Versailles grounds. There's the big one, Versailles, then there's Grand Trinon and Petit Trinon, I think. So, I'm gonna go check those out super quickly. Quite a far walk. This was one of the homes that was gifted to Marie Antoinette by her husband, King Louis XVI. Just a little small chateau. Very cute though. This is Marie Antoinette's theater because she loved music and dancing. And it's her own little private one. It's so cool. I wish it was open to look inside of. So this is Grand Trinon, at least part of it. Much bigger obviously than Petit Trinon. And it's raining now. I mean, it said it was supposed to rain like at like 11, so it held out to five. And over here is what looks very similar gardens of Grand Trinon. And shield from the rain. It looks like the front is over here, so this must be the back of the palace. My palace in one of the chalet. Okay, so my camera died and I left the backup battery at the hostel by mistake. So I'm gonna record on my iPhone. It also started raining, so that's so fun. <laughs> um, but I wanted to show you guys the other little chalets. This is part of the Grand Trinon. Very pretty little yellow room. Pinks and greens. I love that combination. The room for the Queen and King of Belgium, Leopold I. Is it just me or does this not look so much like the main train station Disneyland, like the front of it. Right? Or am I going crazy? The good news, got my extra battery because I back to the hostel to give a break. And now I'm gonna go to the Sacre Coeur because it's open late and it's right there. Literally one block from my hostel. Not walking up that though. Need to find where the little thing is that takes you up. Wow, got a great view of the city from up here. Paris spread all out before me. Be a little nicer if, you know, it wasn't so cloudy from all the rain because it does seem like you can see a little bit of the sun gleaming off some of the buildings. That's quite beautiful. And here is the Sacre Coeur.
impact is for sure. So it's starting to clear up. Looks like it is at least. So I think today's really my only opportunity to do the boat cruise. So I think I'm gonna go do that and then do the Eiffel Tower. Wow, look at the sky right now. It's incredible. It's so pretty now, right at sunset. It's beautiful. It got pretty cold, but like there's the Eiffel Tower behind me at sunset. I've seen it at nighttime and now I've seen it at sunset, so now I gotta see it during all its glory in the day, but I'm gonna go up it right now. I think I like it even better at this time. It's so pretty with it not quite dark. It's just a blue sky all lit up. Heading to the top of the Eiffel Tower. A teeny little elevator. Oh, oh, oh it's rainbow colored right now. Wow. Oh, it's cold up here. <laughs> Woo! Oh my god. It's cold, it's cold, but oh my god. Wow. You can still see a little bit of the sun. Oh. Oh, it's so pretty. Guys, I'm at the very top of the Eiffel Tower at sunset. Well, it's just uh, As you can see, uh, it's just going down now. It's about 10.30. So this is now your time there. It's crazy. It's really cold. <laughs> but it's so beautiful. And I like, I can't believe I'm up here. <laughs> it's the time of the hour. So the lights are going on. Can you see them flickering? I'll admit that. Oh, it's still cold though. Whoa, look at that. That's cool. You can see the mechanics. Finally, having my Nutella strawberry. Mm. So good. I'm just gonna head back to my hostel. It's like midnight. <laughs> I have to be up at like eight or seven. I don't know yet. And I still have to move hostels. <laughs> I'm gonna have like five hours of sleep again. Oh god. But I gotta get back to the hostel first. I think I might just take a cab. Like I'm kind of feeling lazy. So we'll see. I guess it's midnight. It's sparkling, must be. All right. I think that's my cue. I need to get going. Sparkly. My hair is a mess. And it was supposed to look nice tomorrow, but it's like appearing. Oh, I need to see what time they open at, because if it's at eight, but I need to just enjoy the view. Enjoy it, Jade. I'm not gonna see it every day of your life. Stop griping about Disney. 